look, the top of our balance sheet uh, is is uh, a mix of a little bit of uh, brick and mortar, um, or I should say a little bit of kind of ancillary and non-plant touching. There's a company called Weed Maps, which is essentially a, a two-way marketplace. Um, it is, you know, maybe the Yelp or the DoorDash of cannabis. Uh, it's a company that is listed on the NASDAQ and, and, and therefore can attract broader capital and investors as opposed to some of those companies that are plant touching and are still restricted from U.S. listings. And therefore, we have to own them via a Canadian listing or actually in some form we, we, we own them in swap. But so there's there's a weed maps. There's a Tilray, which is a Canadian LP and the largest and most profitable player in Canada. Um, the, 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 the U.S. cannabis market is where, though, we are really excited and where I think we, we have uh, a, a very significant core exposure. And at the top of the balance sheet, again, there are companies like GTI or Green Thumb Industries, uh, Cureleaf, which is in 23 states and is the largest cannabis company in terms of their exposure, uh, but also their revenue line. Uh, Cresco Labs, which is another one of these multi-state operators in the United States, where we think their exposure also to significant part of the wholesaling chain puts them also in a really interesting position to be a, a someone that's evolving with brands. Trulief is a uh, originally a major, the dominant player in one of the most important states in cannabis in Florida, um, who actually in the last week just closed a transaction that they brought five months ago, so slightly before the third quarter, uh, with a company called Harvest.